Hi, I'm Keith Lonergan. I'm one of the orthopedic surgeons with Stedman Hawkins specializing in the shoulder surgery. I'd like to talk to you today about some of the general concerns that the shoulder may present with, as well as one in particular called the frozen shoulder. When you present to our office with complaints of shoulder pain, there are several things that uh, can be in the differential diagnosis, but certainly uh, one that comes to the top of the list is a frozen shoulder or what we sometimes refer to as adhesive capsulitis. And I can explain that further as we go. The shoulder is a wonderful joint and provides uh, fantastic motion and oftentimes can become stiff at, uh, with a particular problem in the shoulder. When you present to the office, we may go through a series of uh, questions to try to determine if in fact you've had an injury or even had a surgery before. And then we'll go through a, a detailed exam to look at range of motion, to test the strength of the shoulder, as well as look at for any muscle atrophy or swelling. Some of the broad categories of shoulder pain include arthritis, instability, stiffness, as well as a variety of others. Oftentimes, uh, folks can develop stiffness of the shoulder from an injury or from after a, a particular event or even without a, pro without, any unknown, without a problem that they've known about. It just develops over time. Some people have a tendency towards frozen shoulder and we see that oftentimes in our diabetic population. The shoulder joint provides great motion as a ball and socket joint because it's surrounded by a tissue called the joint capsule. And I'll show you on this model. The ball and socket joint have the ability to move in all different planes. There is a capsule or tissue that surrounds the ball and socket joint. It enables the shoulder ha to have tremendous motion but at the same time, it provides some stability to the shoulder so that the ball and socket joint don't dislocate. With a frozen shoulder, that capsular tissue that surrounds the joint becomes tight and stiff and restricts the motion of the shoulder. The ball cannot slide or glide as easily in the joint when that capsular tissue becomes frozen or very stiff. The hallmark of the treatment for a frozen shoulder can be non-operative in nature and certainly most of the time is. We can treat that with uh, physical therapy which is the hallmark of trying to uh, thaw out the shoulder or provide it with more motion. We can uh, provide medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication and even give uh, cortisone injections to help out uh, with the inflammation that is, is in and around the joint. If the non-operative therapy fails and the shoulder is still extremely stiff, the stiffness, the stiffness usually continues to cause problems with pain. As the shoulder st uh, gets stiffer, it becomes more painful and the and the patient may not move it as much. The less motion the shoulder sees, the stiffer it gets, and then of course it gets more painful, and it becomes a snowball effect. At some point, if the patient is unable to obtain enough range of motion and pain relief without a surgery, we would entertain an arthroscopic procedure that can address the capsular tightness around the shoulder. The, the arthroscopy uh, or shoulder scope is done through small little incisions around the shoulder and it's done with a device called an arthroscope. The arthroscope is a small uh, instrument that's attached to a camera that can go into the shoulder joint and actually look at the joint surfaces and address any of the problems that may be in the shoulder. At the same time, while watching through the camera, 
and through a different small incision, other instruments can be placed in the shoulder that can release the tight tissue of the capsule. This is what we call an arthroscopic capsular release. We release the tight tissue to enable the shoulder to move. At the same time, we can break up any of the scar tissue that's occurred in and around the joint. Certainly, at times, the frozen shoulder is in conjunction with other problems within the shoulder, such as rotator cuff disease, bone spurs, biceps, tendonitis, or tearing, and those certainly can be addressed at the same time. After surgery, you're usually uh, placed right back into therapy to try to maintain the motion that we've provided with the capsule release. Certainly people that uh, undergo this procedure can regain the majority of their motion and a vast majority of their pain is subsided. If, the, if you feel as though your shoulder is becoming stiff and you need us to evaluate it, please feel free to call. Thank you for your attention and I appreciate your time.